Welcome everyone. What a great way to see this building filled to capacity. Uh, thank you for coming to celebrate this milestone in the history of Spokane, Washington State University, and the state of Washington. As I look around the room, yeah, it's a happy day. I see literally a room full of people who have labored long and hard to make this occasion possible. The building we're gathered in today opened years ahead of schedule because of the people in this room. We wanted this building, we worked to get it. I recall during the 2009 legislative session, we successfully moved the construction schedule forward. And I remember when a group of 90 Spokane community leaders flooded into the Capitol of, in January of 2011 to advocate for this project. What other city in the state has that kind of community strength and momentum? I'm very proud to be part of such an outstanding community. I felt the same way yesterday in Olympi Olympia, where a group of us witnessed Governor Inslee sign legislation that allows WSU to create a medical school here. <laughs> None of this could have occurred without the support of this community and other supporters around the state. You are the people that make this such a great place to live. We don't have time to recognize everyone in the community who should be publicly thanked. In reality, this has been like three streams that come together in a river that is now rushing us towards the establishment of a medical school. First and foremost has been the community leadership of Spokane over at least three decades. In this photo you see here to my right is a photo 25 years ago of a governor, Booth Gardner, signing a piece of legislation that created the urban campuses, the branch campuses of the University of Washington and Washington State University. 25 years later to the year, here we are celebrating this next milestone. From the many people behind the scenes who led us up to that moment and to this moment, there were Spokane business, civic, and healthcare leaders who created the vision of a health sciences education and research campus, the beautiful campus we are on today. A campus in which multiple universities would offer health sciences education and professional programs, graduate degrees, and research that fuels the economy as well as moves our country forward. Some of those leaders, even in this picture, are no longer with us, but we owe them an enormous debt of gratitude. I'd like to take a moment to recognize just a couple of our community partners today. Uh, Spokane Teachers Credit Union is sponsoring our reception, which will be held uh, next door. I think here from STCU is Barb Ritchie. And of course, our great uh, uh, Chamber of Commerce, the Greater Spokane Incorporated, and here today from that organization are Linda Elkins and Steve Stevens, the CEO. We also have healthcare partners here from Providence, the Rockwood System, and, uh, and our partners in our residency clinic, Empire Health Foundation. So representatives from all those groups, feel free to stand up and let's recognize them. <laughs> The second stream is elected officials, public officials elected by their representatives, mayors, city council members, legislators, Congress people, and U.S. senators, uh, among many others, who have been part of this occasion today as well. I believe our own mayor, David Condon, is here. Mayor, welcome. Other elected officials are not with us today, but have been a great part of this. Some of them are busy writing budgets in Olympia. Uh, however, I believe Joe Jackson is here for Senator Michael Baumgartner, one of our sponsors. Thank you. Uh, we, others of our city council are in hearings right now, crafting legislation for our city. I believe Adam McDaniels is here for city council member Ben Stuckert. Just this morning, members of our federal delegation were visiting campus in Pullman, and we're very appreciative to have with us today 
John Colton, who is U.S. Senator Patty Murray's Eastern Washington Director, Louise Fendrich, who is Deputy District Director from Representative Kathy McMorris Rogers' office. Thank you to our public officials and others that may be here today. As Representative Richelli, another one of our key legislative sponsors, said at an earlier event, so I'm stealing his line, our elected officials for decades have been passing the baton from one to the next and moving us forward to the one of many uh, finish lines that we are crossing today. And I have had the privilege and opportunity to be part of that uh, stream of public officials. I deeply respect that there were many who came before me and those that came after me that have played a very critical role in this. And I have to just take a moment to say to our community leaders and our elected leaders of Spokane, we all know how transformative it was for our city when the city leaders came together and created Expo 74 for Spokane. To our current and past generation of leaders, you have created another Expo 74. It is a big one, and it is going to go on and on and on. Thank you so much. And finally, before I turn to my own university, I want to talk about our collaborations with other universities in our region, especially Eastern Washington University, which shares this campus with us, Pacific Northwest University in Yakima, which has recently become the location of a uh, satellite program for our College of Pharmacy. The president, uh, a representative of PNWU, Bob Sutton, is with us today. Christine Johnson from the Community Colleges of Spokane is with us today. To our higher ed partners, uh, University of Washington, which has a very significant uh, RIDE program, a physician assistant program, and with whom we have been a partner in medical education, another key part in getting to this moment. Thank you to all of our higher ed partners. Partners, please, please stand and be recognized. So Washington State University is an amazing place uh, and an amazing organization to be a part of. It is a statewide university with a mission to serve the state. I'd first like to rec recognize what we are all here for, which is our students. As it turns out, the student government leadership from all campuses, Pullman, Tri-Cities, Vancouver, Everett, and Spokane, came here today to be part of this. They made this part of their legislative agenda. They walked the halls in Olympia. Can we have a big shout out and please stand up? I think most of them are standing in the back. <laughs> Students of Washington State University. Washington State University is a team of accomplished faculty who educate our students and produce impactful research, including research on the three floors above us, and a dedicated staff who work behind the scenes organizing events, caring for the buildings and grounds, keeping our offices running smoothly. Our Board of Regents govern the institution and give us the benefit of their experience and wisdom. We have several of them here today. They will be introduced shortly. The academic leaders on our campus are here today as well. My uh, predecessor uh, in, in chancellorship, Brian Pitcher, Dr. John Roll, our senior vice chancellor of academic affairs, Dr. Gary Pollack, the dean of the College of Pharmacy, Dr. Patricia Butterfield, the dean of College of Nursing, and uh, my pal I've been on the road with, visiting uh, all, all over the state, Everett, Vancouver, Olympia, Grace Harbor, Colville, OMAC, Pomeroy, and many other places. Uh, Dr. Ken Roberts, our acting dean of the College of Medical Sciences. Uh, to all of them, please stand and be recognized for their amazing service. <laughs> to our so, as these three streams converge into the river that is leading us to the medical school and beyond, Above all, I'd like to recognize and introduce the man who has led Washington State University since 2007 with courage and humility, the president of Washington State University, Dr. Elson Floyd.
Thank you very much. Thank you. It's a great pleasure for me to have had the opportunity over 20 years ago to have worked with Lisa Brown um, while she was a faculty member um, at Eastern Washington University. I followed her career very closely as she moved to Gonzaga and as she continued to lead um, our state from the perspective of being in our Senate. When she made the decision um, to no longer continue in the Senate, it was abundantly clear that she would be the ideal candidate um, to lead this campus. And I quickly asked her to serve as Chancellor. Please join me in recognizing Chancellor Lisa Brown. I do have about three minutes of comments I would like to make, but before I do that, I would like to introduce to this audience um, my boss, Mike Worthy. Mike? Well, thank you very much. On behalf of the Washington State University Board of Regents, it's my pleasure to be here today. It's really my pleasure to be here today. Um, I was asked to comment on a few things by many people, so I'm going to screen through this quickly. The first thing is, what was it that caused the Board of Regents many years ago to consider Spokane as the health sciences uh, campus? And uh, I love this box thing. If I stood up on this, <laughs> anyway. Um, and, and I want to tell you, there wasn't anything magical about that. It made sense. We had decades of collaborations here in Spokane in the health sciences. We had a nursing program that's been here since way before I was born. Uh, we have outstanding partnerships and members uh, and a whammy partner for 40 years. It made sense for this to be the focus of our health sciences efforts. Um, and we might have, in fact, um, I should have checked the minutes. I don't think there was a conversation that day about someday it might be its own medical school. I don't think we had that conversation. It just made sense. The important thing to say on behalf of our board is Washington State University is a land-grant institution. And that means we have a responsibility to the citizens of Washington to do what is called for in the communities we serve. And as we learn more and more about the need for doctors, particularly in eastern Washington, we started to say, you know, um, we really should leverage the decades of collaborations in health sciences and the massive investments that we've already made in Spokane and move forward to seek uh, authority to establish our own accredited medical school uh, headquartered here in Spokane. So there was much made about who should do that and whether or not Washington State University should do that, but it's simple enough to say that in my experience certainly and in the history of Washington State University, when there's a need that is defined within the parameters of a land-grant institution, Washington State University meets that need. And when we say we're going to do it, we do it. And it's as simple as that. And that's what we said about advancing and becoming a participant in the solution to a shortage of doctors. We're not the solution. We are one of the players who hopes to solve a uh, challenge that our state faces. And it seemed uh, that this was a proper path for us to follow. Uh, I also could look out into the audience uh, and over the last eight months that we've been working on what seemingly was some relatively simple legislation, uh, there are many people I could point to and say uh, they were key players um, in making that happen. And I won't go through that list today, uh, but I will say that there were many. Uh, that I will thank when I leave this podium. Um, and at the top of the list is the man who had the vision uh, to um, take the risks and do what land-grant institutions should do, and that is uh, President Elson Floyd. So thank you very much on behalf of our board, and uh, let's celebrate uh, this amazing day. Thanks. <laughs> There is little doubt that today is both historic as well as visionary. 
And you may be saying at this moment in time, President Floyd, what are you talking about? Either you're historic or either you're a visionary. But this is a combination of both. And, and let me give you a much broader context associated with it. When I had the great pleasure of working at Eastern Washington University and then later becoming the executive director of the Higher Education Coordinating Board, it was abundantly clear to me that we had to define our pathway relative to education in this amazing state. We simply could not be all things to all people. Over 21 years passed, and I had the great pleasure of being recruited back to our state as president of Washington State University. And in that capacity, I said to myself, well, you know, you really can't influence these things now. And so we began in a very systematic way to look at the definition of our campuses, who and what those campuses are, the role that they play in the lives of our students, but most importantly, the role that they play in the lives of Washingtonians. And that's what's so special and so unique about this campus. You see, we are not attempting to do everything for everyone, but what we are going to do is to have the best health sciences and across in the country here in Spokane, Washington. And why is that? Washingtonians deserve no less. And that's what this medical school is all about. It's about the improvement of the quality of life for Washingtonians. It's about making sure that they will have access to affordable, high quality health care. It's about making sure that they go into our hospitals, into our clinics, understanding and knowing that they are being cared for by some of the best and brightest who went through a training program that was collaborative in nature, but responsive to the needs of the communities in which they were part of. And we will do that in conjunction with every community in this state. Every community. That's the visionary part of it, if you will. Is it bold? Absolutely. Is it audacious? Yes, it's necessary. And we're going to do everything as we can as a university to make sure that we deliver high quality medical care. High quality medical care. You see, we've had a head start already because of the engagement of our College of Pharmacy, the work of our College of Nursing, the incredible collaborative efforts that are part of the educational delivery system of Eastern Washington University. And yes, the work that we do as an institution for this community with the University of Washington in the context of the WAMI program. You see, we understand as the state's only land-grant research university what it means to collaborate, what it means to have everything at the highest quality level imaginable. But we also understand what it means to make sure that the research and the scholarship that our faculty is engaged in redound to the benefit of Washingtonians first and foremost. And we will do that each and every day. You see, I don't want our faculty members to be engaged in esoteric research. That's not going to make a difference in the long run. I want them to be engaged in cutting edge research and cutting edge service and cutting edge care in the context of the School of Medicine that will indeed have a lasting impact on the generation of students that's standing in the back with the sustainability to nurture and protect and preserve that for the next generation of students yet to come. And you know, we accomplished all of this on a new phrase that I've coined, and that is Elson time. And Elson time is a little bit different than normal time. You see, no one would have expected, except for the immediate team around me, that we would be able to get through the legislative process, the complexity of legislation, which our governor signed just yesterday. 
because it usually takes a long time. But the message was very powerful. And our representatives and our senators, both Democrats as well as Republicans, understood the return on the investment. They also understood the needs of the communities in which they represented. And so by historic numbers, they endorsed the establishment of a school of medicine at Washington State University. And we will now join the University of Washington and Northwest Pacific University in producing more physicians to care for the citizens of our state. We have a great distance to make up. For as we look at the landscape, we are behind other states in that regard. And so I want you to know that we're going to continue with this concept of Elson time <laughs> and move as quickly as we possibly can to make sure that we are producing the highest quality educational and healthcare experience imaginable. Now, we can't do it alone. And Chancellor Brown has, rec has recognized a number of players who've been instrumental in that regard. But I want to single out two other individuals who were with me from the very beginning, who understood this vision and this concept. And that's Rich Hadley, who's, who's sitting um, to my left. Rich, would you please stand up and let us recognize you. <laughs> and Scott Morris, he could not be with us this evening because of the passing of his mother. And we are deeply saddened as a consequence of that. You see, we talked about this vision for Spokane and who and what we are and how we're going to make sure that we leave this community better than we found it. And that's what today is all about. Yes, it is truly historic and is truly visionary. Thank you all so very much for everything that you do on behalf of our community. And thank you for the contributions that you make on behalf of Washingtonians all over the state. We are better as a result and as a consequence of what you do each and every day. And we will always keep our eye on the ball and to make sure that our work and our activities, the clinical experience, the educational experience, is at the highest quality imaginable. And that we engage in this notion of community-based medicine in which we use the collective resources that already exist to continue to produce the professionals of today meeting the needs of tomorrow. And so thank each and every one of you profusely for what you have done and what you continue to do on behalf of Washingtonians. We have a number of our students who are in the back of the audience, and we want you to know that today's event is about you, and it's about the next generation of students that are yet to come. And the governor wants to talk with you a little bit more about that. So at the end of this ceremony, in a few moments, would you please come up front, and the governor wants to have a, a few words with you. Thank you all so very much. Chancellor Brown, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak here today. Thank you. Our next speaker, has, as the chair of our advisory council, WSU Spokane, uh, she's also been a leader and supporter of this effort for many years. And she helped lead the effort for the community fundraising that gave us the second year medical education uh, that started two years ago uh, that was part of one of the building blocks of this effort. So I'd like to welcome Marty Dickinson to the stage. Good afternoon, everybody. It's good to see everyone. Um, you know, as President Floyd was standing up here, um, I was reflecting back many years ago. In fact, it was August of 1987. I was 17 years old, and I arrived um, 
to my new home, which would be Washington State University for four years. And I was getting my stuff unpacked at Strait Parham Hall. And I went to my um, orientation and there was some student leaders up there talking and I thought, huh, that looks like a good job. I'm gonna, I want to do that job um, when I can. So I began my career navigating through Washington State University and learning so many things that um, have allowed me and brought me to this place today um, and met so many wonderful people and got to serve so many um, great, great people while I was at WSU. And so it's such an honor uh, to be standing here as a graduate and as an alumni and as somebody that's been able to give back to um, an institution that gave me so much. So thank you very, very much. This is a great day for Spokane. It's, um, you know, we're known for partnering. Uh, that's what we do and um, we do it well. And we do it well because you can just look around you and we've been partnering together for a long time. When someone says, Spokane, you need to go take that hill, we come together and we take that hill together. And so today, when you look at all the partners, and many of you from the business community are here, you're so, you're so important to the partnership of how this has come together because it's taken some heavy lifting behind the scenes. And I would just like to say a special thank you to a partner in crime that I've gotten to be able to reconnect with um, on this particular project, and it is to Rich Hadley, so thank you. It's been lots of fun, maybe not so much for you, but for me. <laughs> um, I enjoy getting to um, learn and watch and um, seek guidance from Chancellor Brown, who has taught all of us so much, so thank you very much. And President Floyd, I, your courageous leadership is um, something quite remarkable that we are all very thankful for, so thank you. <laughs> the last thing that I will say is that you know, WSU has shown its commitment, and it's why people like myself, it's why people like Rich, it's why like so many of you out here got behind this effort, because they show, have shown their commitment to this community for decades. And we wanted to be able to respond in return and show our commitment to WSU. And we did that, as Lisa mentioned, through the effort of fundraising and creating um, that second year medical program. And now as we stand here today, we're ready to continue to push forward for the standalone medical school with you side by side. So thanks everybody, great day for Spokane, and Governor Inslee, thank you and welcome. Our final speaker today is a visionary in his own right, envisioning a state that is fueled by innovation, clean energy, and a well-educated workforce from pre-K all the way through MD and PhD. Uh, he has served as a public official, uh, an unusual combination, a, a congressman on both sides of the mountains of Washington State, and now he serves as our governor. He is uh, someone who has given back and will be a key part of this vision as we move forward. I just have to offer him on a personal note, my condolences about this part of the legislative session. It's kind of painful, <laughs> but I can guarantee you it always ends with something called signy die, which is the end, and it always ends with a budget that will be in front of you to sign. And we appreciate your leadership, your dedication, that you took time out to, to come over here today and be with us so that we could celebrate with you today as we did yesterday, this very special moment for us, the great governor of the great state of Washington, Jay Inslee. Thank you. Thank you. What a beautiful day for the state of Washington. We started because of President uh, Elson Floyd's leadership in Pullman announcing a new project for clean energy using Washington technology with vanadium uh, batteries for grid scale storage. We've got a leader here that's leading our state in so many ways. Thanks for your leadership. And thanks for the leadership of the entire Washington state community. I, I'm here representing multiple communities. You'll note I'm wearing a Gonzaga tie. I have an Eastern Washington University Eagles pin. 
I am by tradition a University of Washington Husky, but I can tell you we are all Washington State Cougars today to celebrate a Washington State University Medical School. We are all one. And this is a big day for me personally because I remember when I was courting Trudy when she was a Cougar and I was a Husky. And I remember talking to her about, she expressed doubts about the ability of making that kind of marriage work. <laughs> and I told her that if she would marry me one day, I would help Washington State University take a giant step forward in a visionary historic way. And that day has come today, so it's a good day. I think there's three uh, ways all Washingtonians should celebrate why today's a good day for the whole state. First off, what we really did yesterday in signing this bill, this bipartisan bill, was remove a prohibition on building schools. Now, you ought to always be leery of prohibitions against building educational institutions. You know, on the Jefferson Monument, D.C., there's something, there's a quote, and I probably won't have it quite right, but he said, I stand uh, forthright against any oppression of the human mind. And a prohibition on building a medical school is an oppression on expanding the human mind. So I think we've, we've done right by removing that prohibition. Second, we've got to recognize the increasing demands for medical talent for multiple reasons. One is obviously the success of healthcare reform, the success by, of having 300,000 more Washingtonians have health insurance. But health insurance without a primary care doctor to provide it is a bit of a hollow promise. So the success of this health care reform measure, we just celebrated the fifth anniversary of that success, now has to be met by the substantial expansion of education of physicians, including principally primary care physicians. So this answers that need. It marries a legislative success with an educational success. And third, we have to recognize for the Spokane community the tremendous economic de uh, development potential that this medical school uh, evinces. Uh, we know that uh, we have tremendous researchers here, and every one of those researchers is a, is a possible spin-off company to put hundreds or thousands of people to work with high-paying, good jobs in the medical industry, in the research industry, that is so productive right now. By the way, the, the things that's happening in our state in this regard are so exciting. Juno Company, this company has this uh, incredible cancer, T-cell cancer fighting potential. They're the, just had the largest uh, initial public offering in life science history, and that's in the state of Washington. That can happen in the Spokane community with economic development. So there's multiple reasons why this makes sense. So now we need to continue the next step, which is the budgetary part of this, to get this job done. And I can report to you, I think we should have every confidence that we will forge a solid budgetary way to get this medical school started, and at the same time, keeping the WAMI program healthy. I think that it's very possible, and I don't see any reason we can't get that jo job done this year. So congratulations <laughs> to Congratulations to everybody involved. The representative uh, uh, Richelli, Senator Baumgartner, have led this effort, but you've had a lot of legislators work on this. Uh, let's get this job done. Go Cougs. Take care. Yeah. All right. This is a great day, and we'd like to invite you to continue the celebration right across here in the lobby of the Academic Center where we have a reception. And as, as was mentioned by President Floyd, we'd like our students to come up after this and uh, have a moment with the governor. Want to also recognize other university leadership here today, Regents Don Barbieri, Laura Powell, and Harold Cochran. Thank you for coming to be here at, with us on this celebration today. And uh, to all of you uh, in my team and, and in the Central uh, leadership team of Pullman, our government relations team, uh, you all know how much you've worked and how hard you have uh, uh, put forth effort to, to get us here today. I wish I could thank you all personally. I'll try to do that at some point. 
but but thank you to all to all the Cougs here uh, who are who are staffers students faculty and alum you're a great uh, nation to be a part of and as as the governor said go Cougs and please join us in the celebration